you've been looking into some recent research into what factors make a happy relationship. What did you find? Yeah, there has been a study um, put out by Forbes and it's artificial intelligence, so it's machine learning. And so they were able to actually survey 11,000 couples, which is really, really hard to do. And um, what they found in the study that overall satisfaction of a relationship was to do with the safety and security of the relationship, that there will be a tomorrow, which, which is what I teach is such an important part of a relationship. Also, how much their partner was invested invested in the relationship, how happy they were. And so it, it really create, created the what, 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 what I believe in and what I support is that having each other's back and being able to do things together, making an effort to connect each day, create rituals, having each other's back and working to improve relationships is, is something that is going to help the relationship feel more safe and secure and point you in the right direction. Because there really is no hiding, is there, from the crisis? I mean, we're seeing people at their most vulnerable. So how can we use what we've learned, the tips that we're seeing on screen? What can we do and how can we learn through the pandemic? Yeah, well, it's really interesting because people started to connect a whole lot more with each other because we more had to be, be in an enclosed space and really learn to deal with each other. So what was great was people were starting to do things like just sitting out on the back patio, enjoying a coffee together. Those kind of things really do create connection, you know, and these kind of aren't just tips that I'm saying. They're also really to do more with the brain, you know, being able to concentrate on something together, whether it be a child or or a hobby or something, it does what we call mutual amplification. It really gets that dopamine go going through the brain because we're both paying attention to something. It's a joint attention. And so things like that. Another big tip that I have is, is really gazing into your partner's eyes. You know, that again is very dopamine rich. You can't do it forever, but you, you get to see into their nervous system. And so a lot of couples that I work with, I was encouraging them, you've got some time now to actually do more of the exercises that we do here in the office. And a lot of them found that kind of engagement really, really quite profound in terms of the difference it made to their relationship. Yeah, you make some good points. And, you know, I've never seen so many children and families out on the streets besides perhaps Halloween when everyone's trick-or-treating. But, yeah, you're just seeing so many people getting out and about and, and spending time with their neighbours, which I know is what we used to do as kids. But getting back to couples, it's, you get so many pressures and, and it's important to have a united front, as you're mentioning. Uh, let's talk through some of the tips again and, uh, and what is the importance of a strong relationship? Well, the importance of a strong relationship is that, as, as, as I said, that there will be a tomorrow. There needs to be that real security there, that I, we have each other's back, that I am interested and invested in the relationship. I, I want you to be my significant other for forever. For some people, relationship is forever. And, and so being able to treat each other, you know, different to how you treat people externally, this is not about changing personality. It's about who am I with my partner? So those things where you really are paying attention and that you never stop working on the relationship and particularly creating rituals of connection, anything that can amplify, amplify that dopamine effect in the brain because it's kind of like the brain loves novelty. So some people even found that being in lockdown, they've, they've created some new novel experiences, watching Netflix and getting invested in a show together has really made people come, come a whole lot closer. So the idea that we have to spend lots of money on expensive things is not what we need to do. What we need to be able to do is to be able to mutually amplify the experience of love. Remembering love is a verb. And we have to we have to do things to contribute to it, just like we do anything that we invest in in life. What do you do if one pass, partner is resisting and the other partner is open? Yeah, well, that, that can be very difficult. And it's something that if that goes on for a really long time, will affect the relationship. So the person that's not being open is going to have to address that eventually because there has to be that two-way street. You know, it's got to be a two-person system. We are born very much pro-self, but when we're in relationship, we have to consider that there is another and there is another that have all of those tender emotions and, that, and they, they need that connection and being seen in the relationship.
relationship. So it's something that does need to be addressed. And if it, if, it, if it's really problematic, there can be some things underlying about that. So I really encourage people to find a really well-trained couple therapist. Yeah, and, and no doubt if you're not in a couple, it can sort of relate to uh, to other friends or work colleagues and so forth. And just finally, what have been some of the most common issues throughout the pandemic that we've seen, uh, some successes that you've seen? Yeah, well, well, it's been interesting because people have had to learn to deal with each other. And as humans, dealing with each other is one, one of the most difficult things. And so what I have found is that people are really drawing on strengths, like they're finding where, gee, we can be here together. We don't have to go away on holidays all the time, which can sometimes put financial burden. And so people have really le learnt those little nuances of connection, maybe, you know, using ritual, like, like sharing time in the morning when we first wake up together or at the end of the time end of the end of the night we'll take five or ten minutes just to be with each other and because there's been more time um, people have been able to really enrich relationships so I have really seen while there has been many many couples suffer during this because of the enormous amount of stress I think people have used resources very very well to start to understand that going back to basics going back to the old old fashion days where we just have to be together and just be has really 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 been quite powerful for for a lot of couples and it's been a joy for me as a couple therapist to see this happening yeah i bet it has yeah just try not to complicate things really isn't it it's as you said keeping it back to basics always great to see you melissa ferrari psychotherapist Wonderful. and relationships counselor take care thanks janie